did you get into cricket? I got into cricket through my family. Also, my dad played club cricket on Saturdays, so me and my younger brother would, would go down and watch him play, and obviously we'd play on the side of the pitch. Um, and then obviously that led me into a bit of school cricket, but then obviously coming here at under 11s and, um, and then staying through the youth system and then into professional cricket. So here you're also very good at football. For you, what gave cricket the edge? I was just better at it. I, was, I wouldn't say I was a good footballer. I enjoyed my football. It was, um, we were quite a sporty household. Um, you know, with my brother and uh, we played everything, you know, football, rugby, cricket and um, but cricket was always what I wanted to do but it sort of kept me fit in the winter and obviously we had a good fun with it as well. For those who don't know really the sport very well, can you sum up the appeal of cricket? What keeps people watching the days? Um, well, I think it's a bit of a mixture. We have people that love test cricket, which obviously is a five-day game, it takes a lot of time but there's certain scenarios in it that are if you know cricket well can, you know, keep people interested and they love that and obviously then we have T20 format now as well which for people beginning or wanting to get into cricket is a great way. Obviously, we see a lot of big sixes, a lot of action, and it's done within a couple of hours. So I think we cater for a lot in cricket, but um, it, a lot of it, certainly the longer form of the game, I think it's sort of, you inherit it through your family and the love of the game. But um, I think, as like I said, there's a number of ways now into, into cricket. So over the years, there's been a lot of debate, discussion about the need for cricket, like all sports, to reach wider, younger audiences, often through media likes TV. How, when you were growing up, did you watch, were you inspired by anything you saw on TV? Did you watch cricket games? Was there a particular match that really inspired you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, growing up, obviously, again, luckily, I mean, a lot of cricket was on terrestrial television. That's one thing we probably struggle with now a little bit is we want, you know, it was, it was, a, it was easy to get hold of. And um, as the way cricket's going now, hopefully it will be back on potentially terrestrial telly at some point. But um, that was an easy way in uh, for that. But I think the guys are doing a good job now. Um, you know, as our team won, they're very successful at the minute in one-day cricket, and I think a lot of youngsters now are watching that and emulating that. And I think T20s help that as well in terms of getting youngsters into the game and um, you know wanting to go out and certainly play that fun side of the game. Were there any cricketers that you watched on TV that really fueled your passion? Um, well, I was again. I was lucky. I suppose Warwickshire at the time in the 90s when I grew up were a very successful side domestically. You know, they're winning everything. There were some really good players. Uh, Australia were the best team in the world, so there's a couple of batters that Australia had in Ricky Ponting and a guy called Damian Martin that were my favourites and my heroes, so I used to try and copy how they played. Um, but again, I was lucky here, we had um, you know, Brian Lara uh, break the record out here at Edgebaston, uh, Alan Donald, so we had some world-class players that you, you know, I could get my mum and dad to bring me down and watch regularly, so that was something, I think, growing up, I, was, I look back, I was very lucky to see world-class players here at Edgebaston regularly. Cricket's not always played in schools now, so for anyone who wanted to try and learn to play, what would you, what advice would you give? Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of, I mean, the ECB have done some great stuff now with All-Star Cricket and getting more cricket played in, in as many clubs as possible. So hopefully, I mean, I've seen and witnessed it with a, a, a young son now that there is some opportunities through the clubs. But um, yeah, I think, you know, within cricket, we need to be getting to all the schools we can. And I know there's some good work that's going on, but um, yeah, we want as many young kids playing and, and hopefully like making cricket as strong as it can be and, and flourishing through the next years to come. So you've had obviously countless career highlights, but if we were to push you, can you tell us your top three moments? Yeah, it was quite easy. The first one, um, obviously being English, beating Australia is obviously the, the most important thing. Um, so to win in Australia, I think we were the first team in 26 years to achieve that in 2011. So I think um, from a team point of view, that was, that was mine. You know, we were sat in, in Sydney um, in the dressing room after we'd achieved that and been the first team for a long time um, and a lot of those guys are good friends of mine and we'd come through the academy systems together and England A team so I think we sort of sat there and realised we'd done something special um, so that, that was definitely the, the highlight winning in Australia um, I think as well to go with that we won in India I think again we were the first part of an England team that was the first team to win in India for a long time um, as we'll see this summer, India are a fantastic team and um, again, it's very rare for away teams to go and win there. So that was a highlight and I think from the individual point of view, um, uh, again, playing against Australia, I got a man of the series in 2013, I scored three hundreds in the series. So I think again, growing up, um, you know, and people like Ian Botham go on and win man of the series. So you, I think it's great to win the series, but you want to make sure you're remembered for at least winning a series, you know, off your own back. So I think to, to, to win man of the series in that series was... Um, the highlights of individually of my, of my career. So those are the highlights. What was the hardest, most, most nerve-wracking moment? Um, I suppose there's always been nervous moments. I suppose the hardest part of my career was I got dropped on about 
43rd test match I got left out and um, I think to you have to work out there where which way you're going to go and I think I luckily I got some really good advice and and did a few things that helped me get back into the team I think that was probably the hardest part of my career when you're not playing well and and that happens to you and and you have to then react in 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 the best way you can and luckily I suppose um, you know I got back in the team and then had a really good career after that again but I think that I look back at that moment as a massive turning point in my career it could have gone one or two ways um, you know, I might not have played for England again, but it actually was probably a couple of lessons that allowed me to go on and play, actually become a better player. Edgebaston is very special to you. I think you've been in the Edgebaston system for a long time. Can you kind of sum up and tell us why the atmosphere here is so special? Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, I've seen some, I've been lucky to be part of some really some good memories here at Edgebaston. I, it, it, I mean, it is. I mean, Lords is a fantastic place to play cricket, and I think that's my number one ground in the country. But Edgebaston, in terms of atmosphere, um, is the best and, and spending and talking to a lot of opposition teams, in, in, unbelievably Australian teams when they're playing the Ashes, I think this is the, the one they fear the most in terms of the support and the noise. Certainly this stand behind us gets going and um, it's going to be quite intimidating. So um, I think that's what it has. I think when people come here, they come for a good time and um, England have got a fantastic record here. I mean, the players love it here because the facilities are probably the best in the country and, and arguably in the world. And, and I think as a spectator, you get everything as well. Um, and like I said, a lot of the opposition teams don't like coming here because of, of that intimidation factor. Can you tell us maybe three things about yourself that people just wouldn't know or wouldn't expect? Oh, put me on the spot there. Uh, wouldn't expect. Um, oh, that's a good one. I have to think about that one now. Um, wouldn't expect. Usual, you know, taste of food or pastime. No, I'm very regulation. <laughs> this is. I might disappoint a few people there. That's probably the problem. Um, I probably Just couldn't. Three do. About yourself. Uh, three part. Yeah. Obviously, I'm a fanatical Aston Villa fan, which, again, uh, is a tough, diff, tough, tough time to be an Aston Villa fan at the minute. But uh, that's one. Uh, I love my golf. Uh, so away from cricket, you know, that's where you'll find me on a golf course. And uh, and obviously now with two young kids, I'm uh, chasing them around, doing as much stuff as I can with them, uh, keeping them happy. Brilliant. No worries. That's really good, thank you. Okay, no problem. No worries, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And then we just, because...